Hey. Hi. Welcome Happy back. New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. No, this ain't that type of bottle. My bad. Okay. 2019, y'all. Yeah. Um, welcome back to episode five, six. 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 Of Wine and Words. Mm. Um, today we will. Yes. Today, today we're going to talk about parenting struggles, because yes. we both have them. I am Shari. I am DNC. Um, New Year. Was the same me. But okay. the singing didn't happen. Sorry. All right. So what are we sipping on today? Today, we are sipping on a Roscato. Ro- Roscato? Not Mo, but Ro. Roscato. And it is a, they call it a Rosso Dulce, which is a sweet, sweet red. red. And your Rosa goes, I, I knew that. Apparently she did. <laughs> no, she does. I said it translated. I'm like, that makes sense. Um, where did I get it from? I have no idea because I was gifted this mm-hmm. um, during our New Year's Eve party. So mm. I'm excited about popping Stopped this. Up. And many more bottles to okay. come. Well, let's do it then. Go ahead. And I don't need the electronic. Thank God. Opener. I think. Hallelujah. I might need stronger hands, though. My nails are too I am long. not the one to ask. Oh, my gosh. I was making a sound. We are not going to once again, we might, we might as well just be words. Look. And words. No way. I'm not going to do this today, though. Mm. It's oh, tight, really though, right? Hold on now. Do I need to go get a towel? It's a screw top, by the way, also. And it's cold because I have a oh, mini Oh, look at Shari. Ha! Hercules. Hercules. Look at you. Look at you on the next adventures. Okay. Hercules. Hercules. <laughs> It's red. It's very red. Any surprises? Let's see. Drip drip. Drip drip. Drip drip. drip, drip. We're not going to do Cardi B today. Drip drip. Okay. Not going to do Cheers. Mm, I like this. I do like this. So it is a little bit bubbly. It um, might die out. It's just because we just opened it, possibly. No, I think that's... I think that's going to be part of the body. Definitely it's sweet. delicious. It's fruity. grape juice. Yeah, fruity. Grape juice uh, That's not a word, but let's Y'all roll with it. Man. It is in 2019. Okay. So, let's talk about this. Mm-hmm. We have kids, yes. <laughs> to say the least. And they bring us joy. Mm-hmm. They also stress us out. Yeah. You know, that's part of parenting, right? Mm-hmm. So, how have we handled things thus far? Hmm. Several several items that we like to discuss. Right? And we're going to run through them. Let's do it. We're going to run through them. All right. Well, first off, what does parenting mean to us? Mm. I'm going to let you go first. Okay, I'm going to You've been sober. So, um, she's not going to be sober in like two mm. minutes. So, parenting. It is such a blessing and an honor. And I say, in my case, I feel... Um, it's hard. If someone has said this. I'm gonna I'm I'm use what someone else has called me anointed, only because I'm raising girls and two of them are not mine. And I do it because I genuinely love them. And it's not, I'm not gonna get no taxes off. You know, ain't ain't no extra. This is pure love. Um, and I think parenting comes with it's the highest responsibility because mm-hmm. I'm raising people who can run this country someday mm-hmm. and or who can run the world way. or who can go Definitely. find us a new place on a different planet. I don't know. I'm going to put my best foot forward and wherever my kid. I'm just saying, I'm going to put my best foot forward and whatever my kids are able to do just so they know they can do it. Whatever they want to do, that's what I'm here for. So it's a privilege for me. It's scary. It's confusing. And if, I mean, if you watch the parenting videos, I say all this. It's been like this since birth. Mm -hmm. Like It was worse before. I didn't birth two of them. And it's been like that since Mm -hmm. I've met them. You know what I'm saying? Like constantly worry, stress. Hoping that the best for them, hoping nobody jacks them up, hoping that they don't jack themselves up. It's a constant mental battle, but it's definitely an honor. How about you? Parenting means to me. It's a blessing. Mm-hmm. I've tried hard for it to mm-hmm. become a parent. It was what I wanted in life. Mm-hmm. Got two out of it, you know? You did. Um, and I could easily say they're the best things that ever happened to me. Mm-hmm. Easily. Yeah. So I would say parenting to me means life. Yeah. Life. Mm-hmm. Living. It's it. It is a chapter. So... Ooh, do it. We're not gonna get so, teary-eyed on this. I'm mean, saying. So, as parents, let's talk about different subjects. Let's that talk, wait a minute. Let's talk us. about something real quick. Being a parent does make you soft, though. I haven't cried as much now. Like, I'm let crying. me think about that one. I don't know, girl. I don't cry. You don't cry? I'm proud. I'm proud of all my babies. Like, not for, not about that. Oh no, I haven't got to that. Maybe it's the age. You got you got bigger ones. Yeah, but so I don't still, have like 
for you. The it first does make birthday. Me, I feel it. You know, you feel it in your chest. Like, mm, that's okay. Let me tell you, I ain't never actually dropped a tear. The first month that I had Brooklyn, I'm pretty sure I cried every day. Like, mm. I did this. That was that postpartum. I don't want to hear it. But anyway. I wasn't a- <laughs> crying every day. Just saying. And that's not funny, by the way. That's postpartum not a, is not, you, that's not, not a, a joke. Reference. I'm just saying. It was joy. You know, postpartum joy. makes you cry. And she was crying every day, but she was crying out of happy feelings. All right, so... <laughs> Topics. Told you she was gonna be drunk. I am not though. Okay, so topics, right? Yes. Um, everyday struggles with kids. Here we go. How do we approach race? Race. Let's do it. Uh, I'll start. Uh, Brooklyn knows she's black, but she also knows that people are yellow, mm-hmm. and that yeah, there are brown people, going on. Mm-hmm. and there are black people, and there are white people, mm-hmm. and there are greenish, tan people. Who okay. green? I'm not going to go there. Okay. Uh, but she believes in colors and not necessarily full on race. She does understand that she's black. So that's a start. Mm-hmm. Um, because before she's known, she's really going to have to understand what being black is. Mm-hmm. My two oldest, they already know what they are. So, uh, two, my baby too. He's too young. She mm-hmm. just knows she's the same color as mommy. Yeah. The five-year-old, however, understands he's black. Mm-hmm. He's real black power because of his daddy. Mm-hmm. Um, but he understands there's brown, white. Beige and pink. Those okay. are, those, that's our race, right? And he knows the difference between a black person and a white person, obviously, because of the skin color. But Does we, that bother you? No. We want him to know the difference. Between and I agree. And so I feel like a lot of times when people say, oh, you don't see color. I need my kids to understand color because someday someone's going to They're gonna base a judgment it. off of And it. you don't want it to be a, whoa. And I don't, I don't want it to <laughs> blow their minds, but I also want them to understand that being a different color is actually very unique and a blessing. Mm-hmm. It's not a hindrance. Um, it's something that's a gift from God, and I want her to embrace it at every moment that mm-hmm. she has. So, so yeah. So he 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 gets the concept of race more, and as well as just random color. Mm-hmm. But he does get the concept of race as well. He knows black, and he knows white, and he knows Mexican. Those are the three he only knows right now because that's what he sees. Mm-hmm. Granted, you know, as he gets older, he'll he gets he'll more. see some more. And Mexican is not a race. So I'm just you know using. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I'm just using that as well, you know. She's a tad bit inebriated, so we'll yeah. let her sip on it. Mm. That was race. We covered race. Yes, How we race. About race. Kids, race. All friendships. Right. Um. Well, at this age, they're really fickle about friendships. Oh, I, she's so gonna bad. speak something different. My five-year-old will or delete somebody because they sneezed on him. He's hardcore. Hardcore. He don't play. He don't play these games. Chase, don't he play. has his group of friends, and those that group of friends can change on a daily basis. But but just based on the fact they didn't wipe their nose mm-hmm. or they didn't wash their hands. I respect that. <laughs> he got values. Or they sneezed in his direction. He's got values. Or they were bad in school. Mm-hmm. They were bad with the teacher. He does not associate with bad kids. Mm-hmm. So his friendships, there's not really much I can teach him about that. That's something he's going to grow. With time, it's going to grow. But you're going to be able to speak more about friendships when it comes to the older kids. I mean, that's a common sense thing, too, is as you get older and you get wiser and you go through experiences, you get to figure out friendships. Um, so I'll start with the little one. Little one, I don't think she has a best, best friend, but she has good friends that feel like best friends to her. So Chase, Mm -hmm. uh, she has another friend, Callie, Mm -hmm. uh, Juju, and these are all people who she hangs out with. Like, she sees a lot. She may see the kids in school a lot, but she doesn't have fun with them Mm -hmm. as much as she has fun with her other friends. Um, Let's see, my middle child... She's actually done very well at friends um, because she keeps to herself and she doesn't, she's very observant. And so she's taking the time to like really kind of weed into friendships and she's not, right, she's not perfect. None of us are ever perfect in friendships, but she's, she's had the same group of friends since she's gotten to Atlanta. So that's been, she's now a sophomore in high school. Excuse me, y'all. I told you that's that bubbly Mm -hmm. stuff. That's that bubbly stuff. Um... So, since she's been here, she's been here, oof. she came here. Talking about me, she ain't drunk. She I can't even count the years. I, I can't, because I'm not a mathematician. I'm married to one. Yeah. Um, but she's here in elementary, and all the way from elementary to sophomore in high school, she's had the same best friend. Hmm. So, she's dope. Yeah. My oldest um, came down here a little later in high school. And, you know, your high school years or... You know, make it or break it friendship. Like, either you're going to keep those friends or you're not. Bye. 
Um, unfortunately, I don't know if she's kept any of those, you which see. is okay because they don't fit her brand. Mm -hmm. And if you don't fit the brand, then and your brand what? changes. If it changes, and it's going to continue to change over mm -hmm. life. But now she's kind of settling in the type of friend she wants to surround herself with. So I respect that also. Um, but I think the hardest thing when it comes to like choosing a best friend or just choosing a friend or choosing a girlfriend boyfriend now, since I have that experience also, is as a parent, I'm gonna skip right to girlfriend boyfriend things. Uh, you, I'm not going to be interested in girlfriend, boyfriend, um, until I feel like it's worth it, period. Um, that was probably one of the hardest things my oldest had to come to deal with with me. That was something I actually learned from my mother is like, I'm not going to invest my time in saying hello, hi, come over to the house and all <laughs> that until random. I feel mm -hmm. that it's really worth it. But at the same time, at that point, you shouldn't even introduce, well, I guess they don't know, but I feel like I wouldn't even bother introducing them to my parents until it's worth it. It takes time. Mm -hmm. And I do feel like my oldest had to learn that though. Because again, you know, we were we were still learning our, our relationship and I think she just really wanted the people who she liked to be accepted, which is fine, but that doesn't mean I have to accept you. Mm -hmm. They may go away next week. It's just 100. It's going to go like that with all three of them. Mm -hmm. And if God willing, there's one more and it be a boy. Let me tell you, that little sucker ain't going to... I don't know if he's going to get married. It's going to be tough, mm -hmm. you know, following up with me. You know? Well, Chase, <laughs> Chase apparently got a girlfriend. Now, I, I don't agree with that. And in I'm not class. even Chase's mother. In his class, apparently. She don't know it, though. She too. Oh, okay. She don't know it. He, so he's admired. He's, he he's enamored my he girlfriend. Her. But the girl don't know. She that don't know. So what girlfriend. does she call him? Yeah, who's his friend? Chase. Okay. It's Caitlyn. You ever heard of Caitlyn? Why does Chase feel like he needs a girlfriend? Because she has to play a player from the Himalaya. <laughs> <laughs> that could that could be it. That could be it. No, I don't know. It's probably because he looks at uh, you and your husband, and he kind of want he and so and it's it's. it's I don't know. It could be like that, and I do think that kids mimic what they see. They kind of want that same type of relationship. Mm -hmm. Which I'm good that Brooklyn doesn't do that too often. She does play I don't with Chase no and mm -hmm. her other friend Juju. She does do domestic things with them. Cooking and stuff. But, like you know, yeah, like babysitting the baby. But I don't and know what, like what, that. what his criteria of is. You know, a girlfriend. Of, his criteria. Y'all know what I'm trying to say? What makes her a girlfriend and not a friend? How much has she drank? More so. She's about to need more. Here we go. Mm. So I don't know why she's his girlfriend and everybody else is his friend. I don't know what you makes, need to get down to. You need from. to get down to. I'm gonna let Daddy I need to, to know it. why. I feel like this is Daddy. Daddy no, that's a mommy thing. You, you wanna know so? why it's a mommy thing? Because you need to set the standard on what he should and should not be calling his girl. Period. Mm -hmm. Here comes a child. Here it comes. Yes. One of them. Mommy. Yes, sir. Paige of course, Paige wants me. Why wouldn't Paige want me? The one video we thought we would get away with not we having were Paige. Close. We almost we were made close. it. We almost did. That's close. Now Paige wants me. What's going on? She's about to cry. She's about to cry? Yeah, I want her needs. Her needs. Her needs? She needs her? Okay, okay. thank you. I'll come get her. Y'all holding hands? What's going on here? Mm, girlfriend, boyfriend. What's going on here, guys? Wait, what is it? Oops. No, there's not a toy in here. <laughs> Chase, Chase, leave it. Okay. Let me go get this child. Can we yes. pause this? No? We don't pause. Okay, so you want to keep going? Um, I can hum a little bit. <laughs> Hum that diddy diddy. Y'all don't want to hear that. Hum that diddy diddy. Y'all don't want that. <laughs> I'm a comedian to the kids. Was Apparently that was hilarious. Alright, y'all, upstairs. Don't come up. Because it's hot lava. Okay, I am going to pause it. Okay. 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 Okay
don't talk, don't randomly go up to strangers because he does that. He's fine. Mm-hmm. And he has his daddy's personality where he's like okay with speaking to strangers. Not to me. Talk um, so, you know, it's, it's more about being, making him aware of him or his environment. And I don't want to scare him, but the world is not a safe place. So mm-hmm. you gotta, I'm instilling that in him, which is sad, but I have to tell him, okay, you can't, you always have to be with me because there could be people who want to snatch you up. Absolutely. You know, and absolutely, he's got to make them aware of, of things like that that go on. We're not at the point where he's going to people's houses by himself, thankfully. Mm-hmm. Um, but when that time comes, that'll be a talk as well. Like, okay, well, okay, you gotta let me know something. And I've heard, I've read this on Facebook. Was it Facebook? Somewhere about a safe word. Mm-hmm. So you can have your kid give your child a safe word that yes. only you and the parent, you know, you and the child know. And mm-hmm. if they're ever uncomfortable in the situation, you have them call you and just casually bring up that safe word. That is excellent. That but is it, excellent and it idea. has to be something random, like Cheetos, yeah. or you know, something that they wouldn't normally this say common, in a conversation. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. when it comes up, you're like, oh, something's wrong, I'm coming to get you. Yeah. Immediately, no questions asked. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just about at this point, at five, is making him aware of his, his environment, because they're not, they don't know any, they don't have any fear yet, because they're five. Yeah. I will say, I do think Brooklyn is starting to understand more of her surroundings. She's understanding stranger danger. She's understanding who you don't talk to. Mm-hmm. Um, now, whether or not that actually stops her from talking to strangers, I have, yeah. I have yet to find that. But she did share with me that um, you cannot talk to everybody who is not your mom or your daddy. She shared that with me yesterday. Um, we're, we're working on like her learning her uh, number and the address and all this, mm-hmm. so she has some of those resources. We haven't tried that technique of giving her a, a, safe, word. a safe word, which I think is an excellent idea. Um, but uh, for Brooklyn at her age, I, I think it's always very important for kind of to reiterate that you cannot be and go with everyone. Like mm-hmm. you just, you just you can't. can't be friends with everybody. You can't. You can't. It's like I went, we went to the park yesterday and they were playing soccer, and of course Chase wants to play soccer with mm-hmm. some random fifteen-year-olds, and mm-hmm. he's like. I was like, Chase, you don't know those people. You can't just intervene in their game. He's like, oh, I'll just go up to them and ask them their names. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's not how this works, honey. <laughs> not at <laughs> this age. That's not, they're not going to be friends with you just because you just ask them their name. Them. That doesn't make them safe. No. But yeah, it's just about making them aware of them because they don't know. They're mm-hmm. babies. I will say um, for my older girls, my 16 and 18 year old, or 19 year old, please until I said 18. Um, so for them, it's a little more intense because now the 19 year old drives, she has her own car, so he has to be aware she's of good in places, you know, I'm constantly telling her be safe, be aware of your surroundings, um, everything that just kind of came up recently with, you know, the surviving R. Kelly things, like I made, I made at least my, my middle one, my oldest one worked too much, hopefully she'll catch it soon, take a look at it. And it's just a, a purview into what other women have gone to, gone through and to really understand that there are people out there who prey on things about you. Mm-hmm. Um, whether and it's your self-esteem, your Whether it's your looks, self-esteem, it your looks, your color, the color of your skin, your age, your, your possibilities, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, so it's, it, the awareness game right now is crazy, but it has to be done. Like It's almost like a scary topic. I'll let them know if something going on around the neighborhood. Hey, you know, watch out for this. This is what's going on. I'm on this app. Next door. That app was so loud. Daniel Tiger's going on now. Daniel (laughs) Tiger's. He's a save us all. Um, But, yeah, on that app next door, because I like to say where what's going on in my surroundings. It's not paranoia. Mm -hmm. I just like to be informed. Mm -hmm. Um, And I share it with my girls. They throw in Amazon packages. I just got an alert from next door. Amazon. No, it's not Amazon's fault. It's Who's? the delivery people throwing it. But packages. those are their people because they no. come in the truck. No, some of them are UPS. The Amazon Prime. Okay. No, they only use UPS, I think. I don't know. Well, they, I just saw a complaint. I'm just letting y'all know. Amazon, Your you're, you're going to start getting a bad rep because I've had, I've had several packages not make it to my house mm. for some reason. Anyway. Yeah. But um, going back to just, you know, I let them know when something funky is going on in the neighborhood. My middle used to be like, oh, wow, that's scary. I'd be like, I'm sorry, baby. I need you to know, though. Mm-hmm. So it's not about scaring them. It's not. A, yeah, it's not about scaring. It's about being aware. I'd rather you be nervous about going to a certain place, talking to a certain person, because you thought first in your mind mm-hmm. something ain't right. I would. Uh, that's what You're I want. I don't naive. want you just to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Just being naive, like going there as as informed as you can into the situation. Mm-hmm. So, and that kind of uh, brings us to the next one: respect. So, I'm real big on respect, as mm-hmm. anybody, I guess, would be. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, you know, I can't, do, he's not at the stage where she understands respect yet, so it's more of teaching her what respect is. Mm-hmm. Chase knows. 
Mm-hmm. So it's more about, um, at this point, in- enforcing it. So you can't talk to adults a certain way. No. I grew up not being able to talk when adults were talking. Mm. I'm not going to go that far. I'm not. That's just not, because, I mean, you have a personality, you have something to say, but you have to say, excuse me. Mm-hmm. You know, let me know that you want to intervene and say what you have to say, but you can't just interrupt the conversation. Mm-hmm. Which, at five, they still have trouble understanding. So mm-hmm. they'd be like, oh, no, no, no. Meanwhile, me and, my, me and my husband are speaking. Like, mm-hmm. you have to wait till we're finished. Mm-hmm. Or say, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, it's a matter of just, at this point, once again, five, mm-hmm. they're still learning respect. But he knows the, the fundamentals of what he should and should not be doing with adults. Compared to children, like we just had a, on our way here, we had a conversation about cursing. Mm. He said, "When I'm older, I'm going to be able to curse too, right?" I'm like, "Well, yeah, That's but you Brooklyn can't go. You can't curse with an adult." She's already you know? told me when she becomes an adult, she she's has big cuss. plans. Big plans on cussing. She's going to cuss when she's an so, adult. So then, I, and I gave him the breakdown. Like, you can cuss with your friends, but you're not going to cuss with any adults around. Mm. That's just not acceptable. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. he's he's fine with that. Well, so I can do it now. I said, "No, you can't do it now because you're four. Hey. So he said, well, you know who does? And he gave me the breakdown of everybody cussing at school. But you're not that going to be that child. So, Jason. yeah, it's, it's just a matter of teaching them. They don't know yet. So respect. So the youngest one, I think, is kind of similar play where it's like, you know, kind of teaching it. No, I, I don't want you. I come from a very strict, like, you don't say. You can't even be in a room most of the time when adults are talking. Like, it wasn't even a chance. Yeah. Bye-bye. It wasn't even room. a chance for me to to jump into the conversation or listen to what they're about. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not going to do the same to her. I believe it'll be the same tactic. Though you got to learn how to respectfully ask a question, mm-hmm. wait your turn, be patient, mm-hmm. understand. If I tell you to go do or sit somewhere, I'll come back to you. Mm-hmm. You know that type of thing, and that's an ongoing work. I do believe, and you'll find this out. Every mother goes through an alpha female. Um, fight with their kids and when I say about alpha female is whose house is this and it goes all around it's a test of how far can we push mom mm-hmm. how much can we get over her yeah so no Brooklyn has tested it a tad not much um but I do believe the teenage years are tough um I will say my oldest it was kind of tough just because of the transition and again you know those are my babies, but I understand I'm not biological, and they love their mothers. Their mothers are still very much in their lives. So, you know, we try to we try to keep respect level a certain way, but it's still one of those things of if you see me and you see something of mine or you see something of the household, something of anybody else's, you should respect that. Mm-hmm. You have a question, you just don't you know, go do whatever you feel like doing. Let's talk about it. We'll figure it out. But what you won't do is talk to me any kind of way that you want to. That's just that I, I can't even, mm. you know, but it, I will say it's it's been a struggle for me from time to time just because I know Brooklyn may be raised a little bit different. So my husband yeah, parents. So this is this is another really kind of off topic, but my husband parents are different than what I do. And so mm-hmm. because of that, my husband is the talker. I am the doer. I prefer for you to do what I ask you to do. I don't need all that feedback because I'm probably telling you to do it for a reason where my husband wants to talk everything through. Mm-hmm. We're both learning how to get to that middle point. But with our oldest girls, that's all they know with him is I can say I have an opinion, blah, blah. With me, I was like, I don't, don't need your talking, opinion. I don't need you talking back to me. I don't need your opinion. I understand. I already know what you're going to say, but I'm not. I've never asked you to do anything that you wouldn't want to do or anything that would be dangerous dangerous to you or that, that doesn't make sense for the household or that your daddy wouldn't even want or probably your mom wouldn't want. But it takes time for that respect to come, especially if you're a step-parent or a bonus mom, however you want to call it. Do understand that the kids are not going to inherently probably respect you. And that's not because of them or any of It's just the environment. Mm-hmm. You have to learn that. You're going to go through that. And especially with girls, you have to learn to embrace those moments to do have those conversations of why it's important to have that type of respect between the two because mm-hmm. it's a give and a take thing i don't just expect them to just do whatever i give them the respect that i feel like they deserve and usher it back, back. Mm-hmm. usher it back so now with that yes. the next topic we would talk about is entitlement mm. so yeah. our, easy to say our kids are growing up differently than we did so much they don't know that they a don't quarter know used to dial a telephone. They don't know the struggle. They, they don't, don't know, know that. No. They think you should have iPhones at five. They don't know you're supposed to be in the house when the lights come on on the street. Well, they ain't going to be outside. Like, you know, things have changed. So, 
the entitlement struggle is he feels that. So, for instance, I drive a Nissan. Mm-hmm. My husband drives a BMW, right? My Nissan is trash to my five year old <laughs> because, you know, he's used to driving in the BMW, right? I grew up on a train. <laughs> Who has goals, okay? My point is, what they don't understand is this is not normal. That, well, I, I'm not even going to use the word normal. This is well, the way he's living at five is mm-hmm. not the way mommy lived at five mm-hmm. or the way most Americans live at five. Yes. So the fact that you can complain about my Nissan, boy, you're lucky we have two cars. I had a Metro card mm-hmm. on the New York City subway. And he would never know that. He would never know that experience. But I do I do think you should take him on it a couple times. So my struggle is balancing. Because mm-hmm. I don't want him to live the way I did, but yes. I want him to know yes. what I lived through. Be humble about where he's at now. So you would appreciate the things mm-hmm. that you have mm-hmm. more. He's five. I get that. But at the same time, he needs to When see. do you start, though? Yeah. When do you start? I want to start now, personally. I think that's good. So my plan is, and it's not, I don't want to go to homeless shelter and show him what homeless people live like. Because that's like, you're. That's not nice to the homeless people. You're like, oh, look, these are poor people. This is how they live. Right. But I have to find a way to get him to see this is not normal life. You know, Mm -hmm. you see your friend driving up in BMWs and and Infinity trucks Mm -hmm. and, like, TVs and Escalade. But that's not – you go to the garter school and people pay Mm -hmm. to go to the garter school. So you're going to get those type of people that, you know, go to the garter school. Yeah. Maybe when he gets to public school, he'll see differently. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But – I'm trying to figure this out. I do I, think taking a trip back home. So this is something I want to do with Brooklyn myself. Too. But I don't want him to think it's just like a vacation. You know what I'm saying? Well, talk, but you got to talk about where mm. you went to school. You got to talk to it on this level. So make it into like a story, like a book almost. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I plan on taking Brooklyn back to St. Louis and telling her where I went to school at, showing her the building, showing her how I used to walk to school, talk about how things have changed. And she, it's not going into that old crimes. It's, this is where mommy lives this is in comparison to where you live. Remember the Bill Cosby episode where he used to tell his kids how he walked barefoot to school in the snow? Yeah. And they'd be like, oh, here we go again. I don't want to be that mom. But I have to figure out how to. But it's okay there. to be that mom. <laughs> because, A, like, uh, it's not until, like, and I listen to more so, like, a lot of my older, uh, plus family members have passed. So I listen to my husband's uh, parents and um, his, his uncles, and they always talk about that. But they can literally take us back to the place where they grew up, mm-hmm. the house that they built, so the store they used it. to walk to. Yeah. So I think having that, and even though we may not feel like it's going to be that different, it may be for them. Mm-hmm. It may be totally for them. So yeah. I feel like, you know, with the entitlement thing, it's, it's a it's a crazy balance to keep because I, I go through the same struggles. Like, I don't want, like, I, I for, I want to say, two years, I lived on my mother's couch. Her, mm-hmm. her and my stepfather's couch. I didn't have a room. I didn't have a bed. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a dresser. My mama built a but she had to do. Apartment. She had to do what started. she needed to do because she needed her baby there. Right? Yeah. And I totally understand it. My kids won't know that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, Brooklyn has all these electronics. I didn't have a Nintendo. I had to go over I to my cousin's house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's little stuff like that. And I and I think to your point, the best way to kind of usher in that humbleness is to let them know how other people live when they get of age. Talk about. Just life. Yeah. Taking a visit different people, too. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, we're blessed. I feel like our circle is blessed. But there are other ways of getting our kids into environments that maybe they'll see a difference in how... And ask questions. Like, yeah. It's ironic, but Brooklyn was asked, asking about Dr. Martin Luther King. We were watching, like, a video about going through the... It was about Maya Angelou. You want to do the cupcake? You want the cupcake? Yeah. No. Uh-uh. Made the decision to stay with mommy. There's books over here if you want to look at books. You want to look at picture books? No. Okay. Mad girl. Mad. Um, so um we were watching a documentary, uh Still I Rise, Maya Angelou's documentary, and they had the moment where they talk about Dr. King's assassination. And to my shock, she asked me questions about it. Well, why mm-hmm. did they shoot him? Yeah. What was he doing? Oh, baby. What happened to the bad guy? You know, but I'm starting to know that, okay, mm-hmm. I'm getting closer to that time. I can have some real conversations with mm-hmm. her just on her level. So, um, oh, <laughs> this next topic, body parts. Mm-hmm. It's easy for me because I'm a girl and I got girls, really. It, so does that make it easier? I think it's harder. It's easier because, so I will say the personality of my kids vary. All my kids, other than my middle, are very open. Mm-hmm. Like, we talk about things. My middle is the only one who's kind of constrained. I have to talk to her. Hey, baby, tell me what's going on, blah, blah, blah. 
my youngest, I'm like, baby, if you don't clean it, this is what's going to happen. You don't want, like, it's straight up those problem. conversations. Yeah. And my oldest is like that, too. And she's very open about it. At first, I was like, good Lord. But it's good because then it gives me an opportunity to tell her what I know. You're not going to hear this from your friends because that's the other thing mm-hmm. that you'll probably have to worry about soon. I mean, they, yeah. What they hear from their friends, they be like, oh, mm-hmm. I need to try this product in a place where it doesn't need to be. Mm-hmm. No, don't do that. That'll mess mm-hmm. up your whole system. Your baby. whole thing. All kinds of infections. Mm-hmm. So I have the bo- a boy and a girl. Mm-hmm. Baby at this point just knows private parts are nipples. The JJ and mm-hmm. her booty. Yeah, mm-hmm. teach her these are private parts. She's private blushing parts. She's right now. She's happy. She's blushing. Private right parts now. means nobody but doctor, mommy, da- yes. daddy, grandma. That is That's key it. in talking about body parts for people. Yes. That's it. Um, and she gets. The, I feel like she's she's getting a good grasp of that. She's mm-hmm. two and a half. My son definitely knows it. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's also gotten to the point where he's asking me. Like, what's the word? Physiological. Like, what do mm-hmm. these things do? Mm-hmm. Like, I have these testicles. What do these testicles do? Mm-hmm. That's a good question. So, uh, well, <laughs> that's a dad. Now, that's a daddy conversation. So, it, it was. It, it caught me off guard. So I'm not gonna be like, oh, actually, daddy. It was more of okay. Well, that's where. That's how you make babies. I didn't you do jump I, right into I that. I sure did, and I have no plans of hiding these facts from okay. This is scientific. Okay. I'm having okay. no plans. Of, so I said the the thing inside that is is um the liquid that makes the baby. Left it at okay, that. Okay. Okay. Luckily, he asked no more questions. <laughs> okay. But you, you, I got a body parts. I mean, and I want to treat it scientifically. I don't want to put shame on it. I don't want to make it seem like it's a taboo subject. So it's mm-hmm. like, okay, well, this goes in this, and that's mm-hmm. how you make a, a baby. I agree to that. I mean, there's been times when Brooklyn, I've caught her, you know, figuring things out. Mm-hmm. And I have to tell her, baby, don't do that in front of mommy, daddy, anybody. That's your personal time. Mm-hmm. Um, you take that time for yourself when nobody's around. Mm-hmm. Whatever, you know. Again, it's, again, not shame. You're not being aggressive. Mm-hmm. Not downplaying it or anything mm-hmm. but um i do wonder about the day that we do have that sex conversation mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't feel like i'm not well ryan's gonna have it my husband's gonna have it with my son and i'm gonna have it with my daughter but i don't feel i'm not nervous about it because i feel like i'm gonna approach it scientifically i'm gonna say well the, a man has a penis and a woman has a vagina i don't and think when you guys love each other you put the penis in behind the <laughs> so of course my oldest two know about it my youngest, I don't think that scientific is going to work for me mm-hmm. because she's more of a, what is it? Is it left brain creative? Mm-hmm. So I will have to tell a story about why the sex is this mm-hmm. and why people do it and why people don't do it. It's not just going to be the scientific. Gotcha. It's going to be, well, okay, if that's it, well, why do people do it? Why don't people do it? Because honestly, at this time, the way the world's going, they're going to find out before we able to tell them. And so we're going to be trying to five. catch up. You start yeah. telling them now. <laughs> like, this is how it happens. You're going to have to try to catch up. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Body parts at this point, it's, it's more about what, what can't be touched, what should be touched, mm-hmm. what you should be showing, what you shouldn't be showing. Mm-hmm. You know, when you get a little older, it really, you start it now. So, then when you have mm-hmm. the older kids, the teenagers, you don't have to have these conversations. Right. You just make sure you start keep everything clean. It. And then it starts getting more, like, for girls at least, you got more Thanks to teach him. I will say that I do hope that I've established a line of communication because I've always asked my girls, I said, when you get to that point and you feel like it's your time, let's talk about it first to ensure that you know mentally all the things that go into it, things that you should be aware of, protection, um, what may happen to your body during, after, before, even if necessary. And I would rather have that conversation than a friend because I'm going to be 100 and you're for the good the and the bad. And have facts where yeah. the friend might be telling them all kinds of lies. Yeah, good and the bad. So, mm-hmm. well, I got a long way to go. So You do. Right. So, um, lastly, let's talk about Last confidence, topic. self-esteem. Self-esteem. Um, Self of your... Sorry. She sorry. likes singing. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on here. So, um, to, to, I have no issues with my son and his confidence. <laughs> no, she does not. <laughs> don't know where the boy got it from. No, I never taught not. him to be confident. It came naturally. That's just his personality. Mm-hmm. He's the man. This, play from the Himalaya. We mentioned this. So it's not, I've never had to tell him. I, but I guess like it came naturally. It was like, mm-hmm. oh, you're so smart. Oh, mm-hmm. you're so cute. You're so, you know, like, we always say it. So I guess it kind of just built him up. He took those things in mm-hmm. and he understands it. The baby, the girl, I, I, I'm not worried about it, but I, I'm more, I'm more cognizant of the way I handle mm-hmm. it because I want her. But girls, it's so much 
harder, yes. not even harder, so much more important that their self-esteem is where it needs to be. You don't want them going to look for somebody to validate them. So I'm at two. She's beautiful. She's mm -hmm. the smartest girl I know. I'm yes. always telling her all these things. Mm -hmm. um, she's so smart. She's so pretty. Everything. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's really just a matter of consciously saying it all the time so it can be built into their head, especially coming from her father. He makes it a valid effort of telling her this several times a day. Because, you know. It's important. It's important. It's very important because that's what she's going to seek out when she's older. And you, rather than seek it out, you have it right here at home. Mm -hmm. Oh, nope. you know it in yourself. You don't you need to seek know. it out. Yep. Um, so, yeah, the son, not so much. He has that down. Don't have to teach him nothing. Mm -hmm. This one, she probably will. She's two. I don't know. But at this point, I'm teaching her now. And this is probably what I did with Chase without even knowing it. Mm -hmm. So that's why he's so good at it now. So hopefully by the time she's five, I won't I won't be worried about her and her self-esteem. She'll be in love with herself like he is. So I will say it's kind Can of a say, struggle. That's okay, baby. That's okay. A little toot-toot. That's okay, baby. Just let it I don't know. smell it. That's okay. <laughs> um, so I feel like for girls, it's just really, being a black girl, honestly, mm -hmm. is always very tough. Um, there's always a certain standard. I feel like now it's more of us showing just our natural beauty. And I'm glad that we're is growing up yeah. in a time like now. Um, I don't have to have that conversation of why you don't have to have your stri hair straight. Even though, I will say last year, she wanted her hair straight, and I couldn't figure out why. And she said, my friend said I had to get my hair straight. And I said, no, your beautiful curls are exactly what they need to be right now. And so we've talked to it, and, it, and it's not a thing like your hair can't be straight. It was, I don't want your hair straight because you don't think you're as beautiful yeah. as the next person. That's the conversation. Yeah. Um, so with girls, I think it, it is an ongoing thing. I think there's several factors that happen with girls. The body change. Yeah. The hairstyle. You go through that doofy stage. The the yeah, your mm -hmm. facial gets different. You don't match the magazine you're looking at. The, the reality star that you're looking at, like all that stuff plays a part, and it takes time for every woman to kind of come into their own. Some of us kind of come into it early on. Some of us take a little more time, and I think the self esteem for them, I I hope, is them taking their time to realize not only do you need to think a certain way about yourself, but you need to surround yourself with people. Who also mm -hmm. understand how great you are. Yeah, and that that to and me speak on it and just speak knowing on it does it, not it's not just the same thing as actually it. speak on it. You need so those like, positive affirmations. So even like with Brooklyn, I definitely do like the you're you're smart, you're intelligent, you can do anything you want to do. And I still do that with my big girls. Yeah, because I need them to it, hear it, that it's because never gonna it's going to be time. Yeah, my mama still tells me I'm pretty. There <laughs> are going to be times when this <laughs> world is going to make them feel you. like crap. It's going to be a friend. It's going to be a job. It's going to be a financial situation. It's going to be something. And they just need to know that no matter what, they're going to push through. They're the greatest thing this earth has ever seen. And it's the honest truth. And we all should be telling our kids mm -hmm. that. Because that's how we make strong, honest leaders. Is to get people to understand how to self-love so they can provide that to other individuals and other kids and hopefully mentor up. Mm -hmm. uh, which I can definitely see my older girls doing is mentoring kids. Mm -hmm. So. Um, that was a good conversation. I feel positivity as we bring in a new year. Let's go ahead with the so, affirmations. So the final taste, and this oh, kind of is cohesive of all the topics oh, we just talked about. How do we feel about oh, our right. parents' style affecting our style with our kids? So I've, I've taken the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. So I've learned a lot of things from my mom, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I've learned also what not to do. So mm -hmm. I'm using that yeah, well, consciously as I go forward. Paige is knocking the heck out of her. I don't know why she beat me. I didn't lean into this child. She um, playing with that on. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as like my mom was very, very, very strict. Mm -hmm. She was Jamaican. So, you know, I wasn't allowed to do the typical teenage things. Mm -hmm. um, and I rebelled against that. So there wasn't an open line of communication. So like I did what I wanted to do and I lied about it. Mm -hmm. And because I knew she wouldn't let me. So I want a situation where my kids actually speak to me. I want an open line mm -hmm. of communication. I don't want to be the shut down mom that tells them no for everything without actually speaking to them about it. Yeah. So that is what I think that's the biggest thing I took from. Not so much that it was a, I'm changing her wrong. It was mm -hmm. just like, there were things that worked. You know, her. <laughs> so I'm telling y'all, I don't know how she talk right now. She is kung fuing her own. <laughs> her building my self-esteem, making me the person I am. I give her all credit. But, you know, there's other things that I'm, I feel like I'm going to do differently through my children. So, for me, I would definitely say 
I feel like my parents' style is intentional. Like my, and I'll say my mother. We have really. a child at the door. We have an older child. Yes, oldest child. Would you like to make a cameo? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, no. folks. She does not. Oh, 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 um, but I feel That's like my I learned a lot from my mother that she wasn't trying to teach me. Like I've learned from the things that I know she was frustrated about. The smaller kids is here. I fi I promise this is our final taste once we get to it. What baby? Hello, welcome. What was the last place you had it, sweetie? Hello, well, dogs. Did y'all have to do with I heard dogs? that this is town. I don't know where it is. I'm not sure where it is either, I... sweetie. Because Did you look on my floor? Said. Look on my floor in my room and then close the door. And then check on your floor and check on your desk and around you. All right, baby. Bye bye. Please be safe. You can check on my floor, but if we, you're going to have to wait. I'm almost done. I have no plans to introduce an LOL into my life. You said what? You can check on my floor, but once you come out of there, close the door. Let me tell you, LOL dolls are a gift and a curse. I have no plans. I have fun opening them too. I'm shocked and surprised by whatever we did. About a little plastic piece of Yeah, it's okay. exciting. But good luck with that because I'm not introducing that in my household. It's not like I do Elf on the Shelf. That's a whole task. This is just nope, like, okay. Y'all yeah, messed with the wrong one. Yeah, I'm not doing Elf on the Shelf. Anyway, Why final face for real. to me? I don't know. It's pillows. He, he didn't even breastfeed. They're pillows. That's why, because you didn't give her the time she needed with them suckers. Breastfeed, or this will happen. <laughs> Learn from my mistakes. Learn from our mistakes. All right, so my mom, she was a wonderful mother. We've had our ups and downs. We've had physical fights. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I think she's taught me a lot that I'm taking on to my kids and that I'm taking away from my kids. How can you not look at this beautiful face? Hey, baby. <laughs> she's not. I love it. Um, so I want to say I didn't necessarily lie to my mom a lot. I just didn't tell her nothing. We didn't talk enough when I got older. You need those open lines of communication. So I yeah, I definitely want to keep the open lines of communication. I even forced some suckers with my girls because I understand how important it is because mm -hmm. there was a lot of times I shouldn't have done what I should have done. Yeah. I shouldn't have done what I did do. And if I probably would have had an honest conversation with my mother, I probably wouldn't have done, done it. it. Mm -hmm. Period. But it's not like she kept me from wanting to do it. We just didn't have that relationship. And I think if I had gotten that extra push from her just so I could know, no, for real, I want you to come yeah. talk to me. Yeah. Like, I probably would have had that. But otherwise, I feel like, you know, there's a lot of things that she helped me understand that was important. I try not to do certain things in front of my girls. I try to be a certain way. Not to say that that's a lie, but there is a way that you should act in front of people you love. And then there's another way you act for fun, you know. So mm -hmm. I try to keep the two separate. We have conversations about it, and I'll be like, "Yeah, I, mommy may have a couple sips of wine or something." You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? May have a couple sips of wine, but that's mommy time, and that's quiet, and it's nothing more. Here we go. Some more. Children. This is the last one. I promise we're gonna go. Come on, guys. Yes. Come on in. I want. Okay. Well, I'll come find you later, okay? And then we'll figure we out where it's at. Did you leave it in Daddy's car? No. Okay, well, I'll, we'll have to look for it later. Look in your tent down here. Make sure it's not in your tent. But it's not in this car over it home. Okay. All right, well, I'll call him soon. I know. This is taking her to a different level. I don't know how to find it. Okay, give Mommy a little while, and then I'll be out there in just a second. Yes. You will get some assistance. Check the tent. You didn't check the tent. Hey. Okay. That means we got two minutes. Okay. Um, she so, yeah. That's one and a half. Go ahead. So, <laughs> we got to get these vents out real quick. Vent. Vent. Interviewing. Mm. I've been interviewing for a new job. Why I got to go on 15 different interviews? Mm -hmm. Why y'all can't just schedule all your people that you need me to meet in one yeah. interview? Give check me a day. two hours. I'll interview anybody you want me to meet. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go back to back. On Monday, come back on Friday, come back on Wednesday. I don't got time. I know I don't got a job, but I don't got time for this because I got five other jobs. So, my point is if yes. you are an employer, mm -hmm. interview a person simply. Get an interview, meet everybody they got to meet in that one sitting, mm -hmm. and make your decision that week. Okay, don't have somebody waiting on their offer for two weeks. That's unnecessary. Mm -hmm. That's my rant. Okay. That's fine. Uh, my rant is uh, basically. I'm not a person who believes in New Year resolutions. I believe in creating goals for for okay, the following year that do build on what you were trying to do in 2018. You, you gotta be quiet, Brooke. Okay, I gotta be quiet. Okay. 
Um, so my vent is for those who feel like they must reinvent themselves every single year. I don't think you need to reinvent yourself. I think you just need to stay strong on your goals and work on what you missed and get better. So, all right, y'all. I, I think we, we got to have playland in here. We, we made, made it. it. <laughs> Mothering. Hello. Do it. Do it. Mothering. Uh, so, all right. We'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.